So here we are discussing Rosh Chodesh. We start tonight. It's a very special Rosh Chodesh um, with a lot of characteristics and a lot of events, a lot of firsts that make it very special. And I'd like to introduce Rosh Chodesh by pointing out that we actually have a mention of the date. It's Rosh Chodesh Nisan, which begins tonight, first of Nisan. And we have mention of that date in the parish of the week. So let me just um, ask you to allow me to share this here with you. And here is a verse at the end of last week's parish of Pikudai. Um, and it happens sometimes that events that happen in the course of the week ahead are mentioned in the parish. In the first month, in the second year, on the first day of the month, so that's the second year from the Exodus. So it's a year after they left Mitzrayim, or a year minus two weeks. First month, that's the month of Nisan. Um, and the first day of the month, of course, that's Rosh Chodesh. The tabernacle was erected. Now, remember, um, remember that it's been, uh, what, we've been going at it for, Several weeks now with uh, Truman and Sava, uh, Kitisa, uh, and Vayakal Pikudde finally double portion. So it's five total portions, four weeks because we had two of them combined. We've been discussing the, the instructions for how to build this tabernacle in the um, desert. Um, first the instruction and then the carrying out of the instruction last week. Um, and finally, the uh, Torah describes how that actually uh, went up, um, how the uh, Mishkan was actually put up. Um, and that, as you can see, is on tonight's date, tomorrow's date, uh, Rosh Kodesh and Nisad, when finally that Mishkan that uh, you know had been, that they'd been working for for so long, you can see the components over here. I can just kick, kick, um, spend a couple of moments. Uh, this is the actual, what they call uh, the Mishkan, or the, the Tent of Assembly. This is the outer courtyard. Here stands the um, outer altar, or the one that was used for sacrifices. Yeah. Inside here, you will find the two divisions. You'll have the back, where you have the Holy of Holies, separated by a curtain that kind of goes across here, uh, exactly at the one-third mark, and then the front two-thirds, or, or the outer sanctuary, uh, which contains the uh, menorah, the uh, showbread table, as well as the altar for incense in the back there, of course, behind that curtain is the Holy of Holies. Nobody goes there, and that's where the Holy Ark is. Sacrifices took place here. Uh, people came in mingling. This was kind of open with this um, uh, curtain being slightly wider than the opening. So there was a certain level of privacy. Here are sails uh, that are you know, uh, held up by these poles all around. Uh, and you can't see under the cover here, uh, but there were wooden beams standing all around, uh, all three sides, uh, the the um, western side, the eastern side, and then the north and south. I'll lose my perspective a bit. Uh, and that is, uh, it was then covered by um, three separate coverings, uh, and the top one was what they called the multicolored one, so that's, that's what you're seeing over there. So it's all falling into place. It's all happening, um, and on Rosh Chodesh, it was finally uh, put up. Now, where's the timing? They started um, collecting money for the Mishkan the day after Yom Kippur. That's the day after Moshe came down from the mountain with the second set of tablets, gave them instructions, and, and they got going. They were finished quickly. Uh, building projects normally go over time. This one was finished by Hanukkah. The 25th of Kislev, which of course wasn't Hanukkah that happened, uh, that happened and no historical events uh, had happened yet. Uh, so there was no Hanukkah. But on, on that date, uh, the Mishkan was complete. And then um, and then uh, it stood there. And it was reserved for the 1st of Nisan. Special date. Um, the inauguration of the Mishkan began a week earlier. And for seven days, the Mishkan was put up and taken down, put up and taken down. Um, and there were inauguration um, ceremonies, uh, initiation ceremonies, so to speak, uh, where the Kohanim were inaugurated into the service. 
um, for that week. Um, but the official opening and launch of Mishkan service is on the 1st of Nisan. And that day, um, Rashi points it out, um, and I've, I've, I've always known about, well, this Rashi I, that, that I study every year, but it says that, that that day was special in that it it took 10 crowns. That's brought down in Rashi. Rashi says that day took 10 crowns, and he quotes, as is brought down in a book called Seder Olam. Seder Olam is uh, the order of the world. It's kind of a, a book that concentrates more on dates and chronology uh, and history. It's an ancient book because Seder Olam happens to be quoted in the uh, in the Talmud Shabbat. Um, the Talmud in Shabbat tells us that uh, that day uh, took 10 crowns and, and, and quotes that Seder Olam. Now, what do we have here? And let's let's understand what makes this day, you know, the amazing day that it is and why it was held over for then. So I, I'd always known about this quote, the day took 10 pounds. I was always wondering what the 10 pounds are. So, well, this afternoon I decided I was going to look up what the 10 pounds are. And so we're going to study the, the, the Talmud since Shabbat, I think 87b. Um, no, I didn't write it down. Sorry. Uh, that tells us what those 10 crowns are. So crown number one, it was the first day of the offering. I hope everything's coming out on the screen, brought by the princess. So um, on day of the inauguration, Rosh Chodesh Nisan, the princes of Israel started to offer each tribe a um, offering. It was sacrifices plus implements gold silver quite an elaborate which each prince brought on behalf of his tribe first day was uh, Yehuda um, and it's very significant because um, th those were the gifts by those great people the uh, the Nassim and and uh, that 12 day process because each Nasi brought on one day. They, they all brought, they all want to bring it right away. Hashem says, No, we're going to stretch this over 12 days and they're all going to bring it for the Chadukat Hamizbeach, for the inauguration of, of the altar. And uh, uh, it was uh, Yehuda, day one, um, Yisachar, day two, Ruben, day three, I think. I mean, it's, it's all day in the Torah. You can, you can check it out uh, and look it up. And of course, the amazing thing is that they all brought the same sacrifice. Uh, there was no one up bishop. They all, uh, you know, were, were, were okay uh, to agree on a standard gift per head of tribe. But what 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 makes this significant um, is that this lends a festive nature to half of the month of Nisan. You may be familiar with the fact that uh, we don't uh, say the a Tachman prayer during the entire month of Nisan. Uh, but why is that? I mean, the festive part of Nisan is really only from Pesach onwards, that's from the 15th, it's seven days, so that's till the 21st. Uh, and then we have an eighth day in the Asper, so that makes it um, the 22nd. But why is the entire month festive? Well, because the first 12 months of the... Uh, sorry, first 12 days of the month, there were the 12 tribes each bringing that sacrifice. And it was a great joy that gave that day a festive nature. Um, and so we have in the month of Nisan, uh, the 12 festive days of Nisim, plus the seven, eight festive days of Pesach. Well, let's say even in Israel, there will be seven, which really takes you to... Uh, you know, 12 plus 7, uh, and, and then the day after uh, Chag is called Isru Chag, Tachnon is never recited. So that may, means the bulk of that month of this that is already uh, festive nature. So we, we kind of stretch the festivity to the uh, entire month. I think most people are familiar with the fact that uh, you know, unveilings at the cemetery don't take place during the month of this one, uh, because it, it is of, of, of a festive nature. So that begins on that Rosh Chodesh when the first of the uh, Nesim um, bring their, their sacrifice, crown number one, uh, and then crown number two. Um, the first day of the priesthood. New concept, Kahuna, Kohanim. Um, until then, um, priesthood was actually reserved 
uh, for the firstborn. But something went wrong, um, and uh, the priesthood was removed from the um, firstborn in each family. It was given to a particular tribe. It may have to do with the fact, or it has to do with the fact that um, the firstborn forfeited their privilege uh, because they were all involved in idolatrous or quasi idolatrous practice, dancing around the golden calf. Uh, the only tribe that did not get involved was the tribe of Levi, and that's where the choice was made of the, the tribe of the Kohanim serving as such. There was temple service the week before, um, but that one was led by Moshe. Uh, Moshe, who served as a Kohen Gadol, actually, alongside his brother, uh, during the seven pre-inaugural days, when Moshe himself put up the Mishkan in the morning, took it down at night, uh, and there were a whole series of, uh, of ceremonies that had to happen for the Kohanim to be inaugurated uh, into temple service. The actual day that the Kohanim begin their, their worship uh, and their functions is there in the first day of, of Nisan. Um, it's the first day of creation. Um, and, and that's significant. Uh, and the first day of creation, as Rashi explains to us there in, in the Talmud, uh, that refers to the fact that it's Sunday. Sunday is the first day of creation. The world was created on a Sunday, six days of creation. That's Sunday through to, to Thursday. We don't often think of Sunday as day one. And as Jews, as believers, it's wrong. Uh, what do we call Sunday? The weekend. Uh, so many people um, you know, will think of, uh, you know, on a Sunday, they'll say next week, thinking about the next day. Uh, that's not a Jewish approach at all. Our week begins on a Sunday. That's the first day of a week. And even though it may not be a work day, a work day here in diaspora uh, is definitely the first day of the week. Uh, and in Shachras, you will recite Psalm, forget which number. Um, I'm sure Paul is going to have it in the comments within a few seconds. Um, and we say, today is a Yom Rishon the Shabbat. Uh, we don't have names for the days of the week in Hebrew uh, because all those names are related to idolatry. You can cheat and look in a set of, um, They're all related to idolatry. Uh, worship of the moon, Monday, sun, Sunday, uh, etc. Uh, and and uh, we simply refer to days as leading up to the Shabbat, which is the culmination of the week. That's the weekend, Shabbat. Sunday is the beginning of a new week. And we need to, to start thinking uh, of, of Sunday in those terms as not the end of the previous week, the beginning of the new week, Yom, and that's the first day of creation. That's one of the crowns uh, that that Rosh Chodesh uh, Nisan held. Let's go back to the text of the Gemara and see what crown number four is going to offer us. Um, and here we are. First day of service in the temple. Now, there was inaugural service the previous week, but those were once off special sacrifices that were never to be brought again. They were called Miluim sacrifices, uh, inauguration sacrifices. Um, regular temple service, as we know, with the Tamid and the Musaf uh, and, and uh, all of that regular worship, uh, all of those sacrifices that were bought from the half-shekel collection um, that was uh, started on, on that particular day that was Kodesh Nisan, and crown number five. It was the first time that a fire came down from above onto the altar. It was uh, something which occurred regularly, miraculous as it was, that Asia Damin Hashanah, that a flame came down to, even though you had to light a fire on the altar, it was the duty of the Kohanim to light a fire on the altar, uh, an ongoing you know, everlasting fire, that's not their tamid, which we have in Shul. Uh, but whenever sacrifices were offered, a fire came down. That that miracle, which would recur almost on a daily basis, uh, but that miracle um, started on that Rosh Chodesh uh, Nisan. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of tension. There was a lot of tension because the Mishkan came to a talk for the golden calf. And the Jews had invested a lot financially and in effort to, to make that Mishkan, realizing the error of their ways, realizing the alacrity with which they had brought gold and silver for Aaron, or gold for Aaron to make the, the golden calf, 
must have been gold. Um, and, and now they were being asked to atone by bringing with this same enthusiasm or more uh, for holy purposes. Um, but it, it, they were, it was tainted. It was in the shadow of a very serious religious crisis which had occurred only um, you know, less than a year before. They were very nervous. And of all people, Aaron, because of his you know, very... I'll use the word complex role in the uh, making of the golden calf. Aaron uh, was very nervous on that day. And Moshe had to coax him and ask him to come forward and fulfill his functions. And when finally a fire came down from heaven, we'll read about that uh, in well, in two portions' time, which will be two weeks, it'll be Shmini. Uh, so that's going to be after Pesach. Because uh, we've got the Yikrat Sab before Pesach, really after Pesach, so it's still a while. Uh, but in three portions' time, uh, we will read about um, what, what happens on that day of the inauguration, the portion of Shmini. And uh, he talks about how a fire came down from heaven and, and consumed the sacrifices. That is a, a vindication for the people as a whole who kind of jump and rejoice uh, at, at the amazing uh, display of godly love and uh, of course for our uh it, it means a lot uh on a personal level in that you know it, it, it seems to indicate acceptance um it was the first time the consecrated foods were eaten as the commentary was explained to us within specific boundaries uh, there were no boundaries before because there was no place that was holier than another um, but there are very specific rules in terms of where sacrifices may be consumed. Um, we, devour, we, we, we distinguish between something called Kodesh Kodashim and Kodashim Kadembo, the, the holiest sacrifices, and those can only be eaten within the walls of the, 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 the temple area. Uh, so you saw that in the picture earlier. That was those uh, uh, sort of sails that were all around. Uh, and that's where uh, the holiest of sacrifices were eaten. The uh, less holy sacrifice, Kodesh Im Kalim, those could be eaten uh, anywhere um, in the confines of Jerusalem, which in, in, in the case of the temple was, sorry, in the Mishkan desert was also a demarcator. So those were sort of important concepts of consecration of place uh, that, that had taken place uh, with that first of, of this and didn't take effect uh, before that. It was the first day of the resting of the divine presence, not just in the temple, because we, we you know we spoke about the, the fire coming down and what that's about, but also within the Jewish people. Um, probably most common uh, voice and vatur quoted by all rabbis ever. Uh, when Hashem gives the instruction about the Mishkan, it says, V'shachamti v'tocham. Right? You will uh, build a Mishkan, and I will dwell within them. Plural. Uh, and you know, quoted many sources, Midrashim, Shalom Kadosh, and so forth. Within them means within the Jewish people. So, um, uh, building the Mishkan in the midst of the camp brings divine presence, not just in that structure, but in fact um, all over uh, within the Jewish people. We have to not just create that structure, but actually create a home for God within us. And Building that Mishkan made that possible. I will dwell within them. Um, because the first day the Jewish people were blessed, we take that for granted because, you know, we hear we cut Kanim fairly frequently, let's put it that way. Um, the Kat Kodim, the priestly blessing, uh, here in the diaspora, we only recited Ashkenazi Jews, only on Yontav. You're supposed to be in a state of joy when you hear the Bir Kat Kodim. Um, and the Kodim bless you when there is a prevailing feeling of Simcha and of joy. Uh, and uh, we find it difficult in the diaspora to experience joy. Uh, so we reserve that for Yontav. Our Shvadi Jews do it more frequently, even in the diaspora in Israel, you will find uh, Duchening happening uh, every Shabbos in Jerusalem. Um, 
many communities do it every single day. When did this first happen? I refer you back to the Pasha of Shmini that deals with this eighth day, uh, seventh day of inauguration, plus the actual Rosh Chodesh Nisan. And that's when Aaron stands up for the very first time and recites those words of Birkat Kohanim uh, that we've taken for granted that, you know, we are have Kohanim who are conduits for blessings upon us, but it's definitely not something that, you know, that, that we should be taking uh, for granted. And, and that began on that uh, special day. Um, and I think we're on number nine, first day of the prohibition of improvised altars in Hebrew, a Bamba. Um, an improvised altar uh, means that when there isn't a central place of worship, like a temple in Jerusalem, or um, or a Mishkan in the center of the encampment of the Jewish people in the desert, um, then there's something called Heter Babot, a provision for private altars. So if a person wanted to bring a private sacrifice, um, he could build a Baba, an altar, and do this in his backyard. Uh, and that was perfectly acceptable until day one, first of Nisan. That's when that ban came in. Now, why is the ban a good thing? A ban, the ban's a good thing because it, it kind of centralizes worship and it brings people together and unifies the people. Whereas, well, think back of uh, three years ago this time, um, and when we suddenly found that uh, we had the Heter Babot, we had some kind of a, a permission to daven at home that lasted for months and months and months. Uh, was it good? Um, it's, a, it's, it's a long discussion, but the, the quick answer to that is no. Note uh, the number of people who still haven't resumed uh, attending shul uh, and uh, the last level of lockdown fell uh, about 12 months ago, exactly a year ago, and, and yet, um, yeah. So it wasn't a good thing. Uh, it, it was, it was a, you know, decentralizing worship is not good. Um, so re-centralizing a worship by banning Bamot and saying only one place. Incidentally, when they conquered the Holy Land, uh, and uh, during the year, the, the years of the conquest, uh, there wasn't centralized worship again. And again, with decentralized, people could build bamot and and, and make themselves a you know backyard minyanim, uh, you know once again. Um, and then once the Mishkan was built in Shiloh, that that fell away. And once it was moved to Jerusalem, and that became the permanent home, even subsequent to the destruction of the temples, uh, that that decentralization uh, has never happened, although we have synagogues everywhere. Uh, but even when you dive in, you know, Johannesburg, Cape Town, Israel, wherever you may be, uh, you, you're davening and you're facing your shalim and your prayers are going through there. So there's still that uh, centrality, centralization uh, of, of our prayers. So that, that began uh, on the um, first day of Nisan, and I think we've got nine crowns, am I right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and crown number 10. The first of the months. Nisan is our first month. Is that important? Very. You see, the year begins in Tishrei. But the Jewish year, the birth of the Jewish people is in Nisan. So when we count years in 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 in, in a secular sense, um, we 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 are looking at uh, a year that begins Nisan, uh, sorry Tishrei, uh, which is the anniversary of the creation of the world. But then there comes a people who kind of has its own creation, its own rhythm, and its own cycle, and that's the Jewish people. And our first month is the month of Nisan. So we'll celebrate Rosh Hashanah on, on the day of the creation of the world, uh, because it's definitely not an insignificant event. Uh, but we'll throw much more into the fact that the months of the Jewish people and that calendar and that cycle, this is month number one. Um, and uh, Nisan is a month of miracles. Uh, the word Nes is clearly hidden uh, in in uh, the, the, the not clearly hidden, hidden, kind of in plain view, uh, in the month of, of uh, in, in the name of Nisan, uh, you have the word Nun and Samach, which is a, a nace. It's a miraculous month. 
And that's the birth of the Jewish people, uh, not insignificantly uh, during uh, the month of Aries, which was the, the, the power of Egypt. And they were defeated very much during their, uh, you know, they, they worshipped the sheep, uh, the ram, and, and, and they, they were being defeated and being forced to allow the Jews to, to leave uh, their uh, kingdom um, on, on that, uh, during that month. Um, so that's, that's the power of the Jewish people. Uh, to overcome nature, uh, to be a miraculous nation. Uh, and we were born as a people there, uh, as I mentioned the other day, the crucible of, of Mitzrayim, uh, in, in, in the suffering of Mitzrayim. But we came out of there uh, and became a, a nation, became a people um, during that month of Nisan. Uh, and it's significant that uh, we celebrate that. So this is Rosh Kodesh Nisan. And let's just get all 10 crowns up on the screen again. Uh, and, and, and this is why we're having a very celebratory day tomorrow, the first day uh, when the uh, the Siim's sacrifices were brought uh, to the temple. So, in fact, uh, they are those that have the custom to read the section of the Torah that relates to the offering of that prince on every single day. You can look at this in the room, you'll find it there. The first day when Kohanim acted as such, the first day uh, of the week, uh, as in the first day of creation, first day of full service in the temple, the first time that uh, fire came down from heaven uh, onto the altar, the first time that there was a restriction on space where consecrated foods were eaten, uh, which uh, we discussed was is relevant, the first day of the resting of the divine presence within us, the first day Jewish people were blessed, Birkat Kohanim, the first day of the prohibition of improvised altars, and finally uh, the first of the month. So I'll leave you to celebrate uh, a very, very uh, happy Rosh Chodesh, Chodesh Tov, um, and may uh, this month of miracles indeed herald true, complete miracles uh, for each of us individually, and of course for Klal Israel as a whole. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi.